I'm very excited to be able to talk with you today. And does anyone want to guess what we'll be talking about? Or maybe you saw that slide toward the beginning? Well, actually, um, today, although writing and editing are extremely important, uh, then we will be learning about inspirations for writing. You were in the Flying Fingers editing class, right? Yeah. 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 Um, yes, so, um, yes, today we'll be, we will be learning a little, a little something about something different, and today we will be learning about how to get ideas for our writing, really how to start out. So, um, do any of you, or have any of you, in the past had difficulties thinking of an idea about what to write about? Okay, I see some raised hands. And you don't need to work too much because that's a problem that a lot of people encounter, but it can get kind of annoying when you're trying to come up with a story idea or an article idea and you just can't think of anything. So today we are going to try to look at some different ways we can get ideas from things all around us and from people, etc. And then we will be creating a quick story of our own. Okay, so that is our activity for today. Starting out, inspirations for writing. Okay. Let's move on. Okay, so number one, observe. Now, does anyone want to tell me what observe means? Go over your writing and read it out. Well, observing, if you, um, when you're observing, you could maybe go over your writing, observe it carefully, and see if there are any errors, etc. However, observing means more like when you're going outside, for instance, or eating at a restaurant, then when you're looking around and observing, then you're watching and looking carefully. And you are looking at people and thinking, hmm, I wonder about this or that and really thinking very carefully while you are looking as well. So that is observing. When we look around and notice the things going on, we are observing. To observe means to see or notice something, especially while watching carefully. Okay, so when we observe, uh, then we can help it, it can help us get ideas from the simple things we've noticed. And by the way, I see that you have paper and pencil. You are welcome to take notes on anything in the presentation or any ideas that suddenly hit you. If you have some of those, you can uh, write those down. Okay, so who would like to tell me about something they have observed today? It can be in school or at home or uh, it could have been something that you saw on your way to school. good thing to observe. Yes, actually there are people who uh, are may have jobs in watching how animals behave and so they usually work at zoos for instance. So very good. You could observe the ways animals behave and whether you work at a zoo or whether you're doing it casually for the purpose of getting ideas or because it's fun. That Yes, those are very good sources. So for instance, um, do any of you here have pets? You can raise your hand if you do. Okay, very good. So those are some of the best animals to observe because they are basically readily available. I mean, they're going to be around the house. And so you can watch them pretty carefully. It's likely that you know them pretty well. So yes, that would be a wonderful source. Okay, very good. Who else would like to tell me about something they, they could observe and get ideas from? Like the wilderness. The wilderness, very good. So. Maybe some of you have gone on hikes before or uh, expeditions into forests or something like that. Uh, and you can observe what you see there. You can observe different plants, the flora and fauna. So those are also great sources for observation. Now, who would like to tell me an example of a story idea they might be able to get from looking around, <coughs> excuse me, in nature and in the wilderness? Can you please repeat the question? Sure. Um, the question is, 
so um, when, when students suggested that we can get ideas from observing the wilderness from nature, which is a very good one, and um, so I'm asking, would anyone like to come up with a specific story idea, an idea for a story or even an article, actually, that you could get from that? You could, sorry? The book Hatchet. The book Hatchet. The book Hatchet. Oh, I see. So you're saying that this book, Hatchet, it was, um, has a lot of things in it that seem to come from observing the wilderness. So very, that's a very good example. But what I'm asking right now is an original story idea. So one that comes from you, one that you could think <laughs> of from observing the wilderness. Sorry if I did not make that clear. <laughs> If you say, like, to start up the story, if you're going hiking or something, and you run into a bear, and something, and then that, and then that gets the story started. Okay. Yes, that is a very good point. So you went in an exciting part where maybe you could be going hiking, and then you run into a bear somehow. Yes, that would definitely be extremely exciting, and probably a good idea for a story. Okay, uh, yes, in fact, one time I was hiking with my dad and we encountered a couple who told us probably it wasn't a great idea to go up by, um, it was like Novelty Hill Road or something, uh, and because they said that they had seen a small bear, like, you know, a, a cub, and they, they didn't see the mother, but if, if the mother saw them, would probably be pretty mad, so they told us it might not be a good idea to go by there. So, um, yes, there were some bears around here where I live recently, Washington State. Okay, um, very good. So we could get ideas from a hike where we run to a bear. What, what is another idea, the last idea? story idea. Um, a city kid going to the country and you could also maybe talk a little bit about how they adapted and if they did that successfully and how they liked it, etc. And how the country people thought of the city person. Okay, very good. And yes, one more. I see you raise your hand. Um, if this one, like, see a girl was w walking in her farm field and she was like in a slough surrounded by trees and a lynx jumped over at her horse. Wow, that would be uh, again very exciting. A lynx, uh, very interesting animals actually. I've seen a few pictures but never seen one in person of course. Uh, okay, so that would be a great idea for a story definitely. Very exciting, very suspenseful to the reader as we want to know what happens. Okay, wonderful. Now, here is our activity, and this is a little closer to home, or at least closer to your school. So look, what I want you to do is look around your classroom. So you can probably see a lot of things in your classroom. And then narrow your focus. Find an object like a globe or a potted plant or a person like your teacher or classmate to focus on. Observe the object or person, and then what can you tell me about them? So it could be a small detail. But could you tell me something perhaps a little more unique? For instance, sitting in an 18th century armchair, if you were observing the armchair. She or she has, a she has a cushiony chair with her legs crossed. Okay, sure. Uh, and anything special about the person, your teacher? She has a nice coat. Okay. Um, <laughs> So, I mean, like, okay, nice coat, that, that's a good detail, but what I meant in particular was, um, 
Like for instance, the way she teaches you, whether